Hello there, it's Tim, Golf 5 Tango Mike, and thanks for joining me. Now, plenty of people have a real challenge getting on 40 metres in a, uh, well, a postage stamp garden. Now, I've got about 10 metres by 10 metres of space here, so I can cram 40 metres in. Others are less, uh, well, less fortunate. Some people live where basically they have basically a yard to go by, so ground radials, let alone any sort of elevated radials or a horizontal antenna, just isn't um, an option. Now, Usually verticals require a, an excellent ground to work and an excellent ground usually means a radial system. But half wave verticals are slightly different. The problem is of course that uh, a half wave on 40 meters is 66 feet long. Well, you don't need to have that much in terms of height because it's pretty difficult to achieve. In fact, you need probably just over half of that. So let's uh, see the antenna that I think, I've used in, in fact, that I think could be a good option for those who are really short of space and who really want to get on 40 meters. Let's take a look at the antenna. In terms of uh, the sort of RF and the antenna currents themselves, well, it's, as you may have seen before from a previous video of mine, I'll post a link up there, um, I put a video up for a 10 meter long uh, vertical for 20 and 10 meters. 20 meters is a half wave, 10 meters is a full wave. And that's what that first 10.1 meters actually does for you. Uh, up until the coil. And then as the coil, you've basically then got a, a bit of loading for 40 meters. Now normally, if that was a 66 foot long antenna going upwards, you'll find that you'd have a, a current, uh, current maximum about halfway up that antenna. But of course, it's a shortened antenna. So you can see that the, the, the current peak actually gets choked off literally uh, just as you get to the coil. Uh, having spoken to uh, Ron at High End Fed about two years ago, I actually uh, we did an email exchange, and uh, what we uh, what he told me was that this antenna typically has a performance which is about six dB or so down on a uh, sixty-six foot long halfway for forty meters. So you're talking in maybe an S point or maybe two S points at the most down on a full half wave antenna for forty meters. So not exactly a deal breaker, and it gets you forty meters with hardly any, if any, horizontal space. So looking in at the antenna itself and how it's laid out, we're looking at the bottom one, by the way, not the top one, the bottom one there. Looks familiar, doesn't it? We've got just over 10 meters of wire uh, going up to the coil there. And that uh, bit gives you a uh, basically a, a half wave on 20 meters and also a full wave on 10, and should give you a very good SWR match for those two bands. The coil itself is 34 microhenries, and you can see uh, towards the bottom of the description there how you could make that coil if you wanted to make it yourself. And after that, you've got 1.85 meters of wire. So overall, the antenna is just about 12 meters long, or just under 12 meters long. And that should be able to be used then with any commercially bought 12 meter fiberglass pole, like the spider beam pole. There are others available as well. And you can use that as a vertical. Okay, so a pretty easy to deploy antenna, both at home and portable. That doesn't require any sort of uh, ground radial setup at all. And therefore, very little space. Here's some pictures of the antenna then. We've got the, uh, the coil itself, look, near the top of the antenna, about 1.8 meters from the top of the antenna there on the fiberglass pole. And as we go down the antenna, down the pole, we go down to the transformer. Now, this particular one is actually a portable antenna. It's marketed as a portable antenna, rated, rated at 100 watts, but uh, these can be rated to a higher power than that, depending on how the transformer's put together. Just a single uh, toroid in there, I'm pretty sure. Probably a 140, 43, perhaps. Uh, but good enough for 100 watts. Let's have a look now at the SWR plots then. So looking in at the SWR plot for 40 meters on the uh, on the analyzer. Now bearing in mind, I took this uh, SWR measurement after uh, a fairly short run, about a seven meter run of um, very, very low loss coax Ecoflex 10, which is very low loss, especially at seven megahertz. So this is pretty much a, a reasonably accurate uh, SWR measure. And what we've got here, as you can see, is that we've almost got a two to one match uh, throughout the 200 kilohertz that we have available here in the, in Europe. Um, just at the very bottom, at the very top, you've got it at about 2.2 to one. But uh, as you can see, down around seven, one, one, two, we've got a very good match. And really it's, in, it's entirely usable uh, throughout the SSB portion. Um, in fact, these antennas are pretty easy to adjust uh, all I had to do really was to lengthen the, uh, you, you've got it on the end of a, um, oh, I haven't got it here to show you, which is a shame, but I've got it on, you've got it on the end of like a, a little uh, nut where you can, you can uh, shorten or lengthen the wire, very easy to tune. And all I had to do with this uh, particular antenna 
was to maybe uh, shorten it a little bit to maybe get the resonance slightly higher because I'm an SSB guy. But of course, if you're into CW or data, you make it slightly longer to bring it further down the band. But to be honest with you, um, your tuner, your 7300 here, will cover it quite easily throughout those 200 kilohertz. So to be honest with you, um, very manageable SWI indeed on 40 meters. And if we look then at 20 and 10 meters, very similar again, uh, 20 meters, excellent match. 10 meters, pretty good. I mean, it didn't get much below 1.3, 1.4 to one, uh, but that's absolutely fine. And it's pretty broad banded as well, as you can see. So overall, uh, pretty workable SWR figures for all three bands. Now, unfortunately, the bands weren't playing ball, literally, when I was, uh, when I was testing the antenna on uh, Thursday morning. So as we can see, the number of spots, I know the DX cluster isn't everything, by the way, uh, but the number of spots, especially on 40 and 20, were quite low for the period you see there. Um, and that shows that the bands were really, really tough. But uh, still managed to make some contacts. Let's have a quick look at what uh, contacts I managed to make uh, during that uh, sort of late morning and early afternoon. Germany 5, Tango Mike. Uh, QSL, good afternoon, QSL. You're 5 and 9, 5 and 9. Uh, name here is Tim on the south coast of England, over. Yeah, Roger. Good afternoon, Tim. You are 4 by 5, 45. My name is Ale. We 5, uh, Tango Mexico. And uh, 5 by 9, uh, 59, you see your report. Uh, my name is uh, Tony uh, Tango, Oscar November Yankee, in all the coast of Sicily Island, uh, Roger. No problem, great to work you over there in Gibraltar, and uh, all the best to you, 73. Okay then, Tim, thank you for calling in and stay safe there, 73. Just a quick look then, really. Uh, I think this is a really good option. You can make this antenna yourself. You know, you could literally, you can either build your 49 to 1 if you want to, or if you want to buy a 49 to 1 transformer and then run 10 meters of wire up and then wind that coil. There's plenty of designs online about how to wind that, uh, that coil. You also saw on that original graphic as well, I'm sure, there was actually another antenna there with a, with a, with a, with a greater, uh, a bigger coil for 110 microhenries. So that was designed to actually give you 80 meters on the end of a 66 foot wire, a bit like this. So you'd have uh, 66 feet or 20 meters of wire, which will give you 40, 20, 15 and 10 of a 49 to 1 and then with that 110 micro henry coil and about two meters of wire it'll give you a pretty narrow slice of 80 meters but if you've only got room for that and you can get on 80 hey you know you're not going to be a big dx gun but it'll get you on the band i actually think this antenna however would probably perform better on 40 than that other one will do on 80 meters uh, so that's interesting to see but overall, what do I think about this antenna? Well, as a portable antenna, it's fantastic. It gets you on 40 and 20 and 10 without any horizontal issues at all. It's on horizontal space. You're not going to have people walking into radials. You're not going to have wires slung here and there. Straight up a pole, job done. Make sure that's secure. You've got a result. You will need a 12 meter pole to run it vertically. Of course, you can run it as a sloper as well. So you don't have to have a 12 meter pole. You can operate up maybe up, up the eight or nine meter point and run it down as a sloper, entirely possible. Uh, you could probably do an inverted L. Not sure about inverted V, but you can probably try it. It'll probably work. Um, so not bad at all. And for home, if you've got absolutely no horizontal space and you've literally just got a vertical space, maybe five or 10 feet either side, gotta be worth a try. Um, one thing I will say, if you are new into HF, you, maybe you're interested in such an antenna because of your small space, might be worth you flinging up uh, any sort of vertical yourself, any sort of rough vertical yourself first, because vertical antennas uh, are likely to have probably a higher noise floor. So there's no point you going out uh, to the trouble of making one of these or maybe buying one of these, um, unless you know that your noise at home is manageable with a vertical. That's the only thing. And at 40 meters, uh, you know, it's going to be, uh, it's going to, it could be quite a high noise level. You can see here at about S6 of noise floor during the day. Um, that's not too bad in, in modern parlance for a vertical antenna. It is about two S points less with a dipole or a doublet. There's no doubt about that. But that's one of those things that you have to bear in mind. Well, thanks for joining me. If you want to look at another video I've done about this antenna, uh, click up on here. And I've uh, used this antenna in the past for portable activation and had a really good time with it. So you can have a look at how it performed in more detail then and how I set it up portable. 
Thanks for watching. Don't forget to click subscribe. We'd love to have you on board, by the way. And uh, thanks for joining me. Take care now and stay safe. 73.